to Ishmael Patel, Chair of Friends of Al-Aqsa. Uh, good afternoon to you, Mr Patel. How confident are you that the ceasefire will hold? Well, I think it will hold temporarily as it has done in the past because the Palestinians over the past decades have witnessed Israel repeat its aggression upon them. So what we have seen at the moment uh, is a temporary pause to the attacks on the Palestinian people. But unfortunately, if we really want the Palestinians to be free uh, and avoid Israeli aggression, we have to end the occupation. Both Hamas and Israel seem to indicate that they've been successful in achieving this ceasefire, but it's hard to think of anything as a success that results in the death of so many civilians, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, we've just had the coverage of Maria Hatib, who, with her four siblings, were resting in their house and taking security from the property, thinking that being in their house they would be safe. But unfortunately, they were bombed last Sunday. Uh, and Maria lost all her family, her four brothers and sisters and her mother. Now she's become an orphan. Uh, and we have to stop that kind of aggression. And that is one of the reasons why we are out here in London, to make sure that we do not have any more Marias. And we make sure that the only way that can happen is for our government, in particularly, and also the American government, is to put pressure, not just give words uh, to, to Israeli and the international community. I was speaking earlier, Mr Patel, to a spokesperson for the Israeli embassy here um, in London, and he said that Hamas is effectively treating uh, the citizens of Gaza as human shields. What would you say to that? Well, there's over two million people living in Gaza. They have been put under siege by Israel. That siege has been going on for 15 years. This is the longest siege in human history. If anybody is putting Palestinians in the front of the fire, it's the Israeli government. They have closed all entries and exit to Gaza. The Palestinian people cannot move. Uh, and therefore, they're, as it's been rightly said, they're living under an open prison. And we have to make sure that that siege ends if we want to free the Palestinian people and make sure that they're not used by Israel as targets to punish the, the, the Palestinians. Do you think that Hamas is representing fully the best interests of Palestinian people? Again, the spokesperson for the Israeli embassy said these are people you can't reason with. They want to replace Israel with an Islamic state. Hamas is one of the political parties uh, of the Palestinian community. Uh, they have their own views. But we have to here talk about what the Palestinian people want. And the Palestinian people want an end to their occupation, to the apartheid policies that is exercised upon them. And the only way that can happen is to make sure that we, the international community, put pressure on Israel. You cannot use Hamas as a fig leaf, as a her red herring, to attack the Palestinians. Israel has been attacking Palestinians well before Hamas came into existence. In fact, 75% of the Palestinian population were made refugees before Hamas existed. We had the massacres of Dar Yassin before Hamas existed. We had the massacre of Shabra and Shatila before Hamas existed. So, so Hamas is simply an excuse for the Israelis to carry on with its occupation. But is, is there any hope? President Biden has said the only solution is a two-state solution. Is there any hope under the leadership that's currently in place in Israel and for Palestine? Well, there can only be hope if... Uh, America and Britain translate their words into deeds. There's no point saying the two-state solution is the only way forward when America and Britain gives a wholehearted support to Israel to continue with its occupation and bombing of the Palestinian people. What we need to do is bring about sanctions against Israel because Israel is violating international law. According to Human Rights Watch and Beit Salem, a UN NGOs, Israel is carrying out apartheid policies against Palestinians they have got something like over 65 draconian laws that are discriminatory against Palestinians. And we have to stop all this. And only through that can we bring about a two-state solution. So words on itself will not help solve this problem. What we need is now deeds from our countries, in particularly the United States and America. One more words, thing. Sorry, United words. States and Britain. One more thing. Sorry, one more thing I want to say. That Britain, we have policy in this country that we cannot sell arms to countries that violate international law and repress citizens internally. 
Israel is doing both of those things, yet our country, the United Kingdom, continues to sell arms to Israel, and we have to stop that. I, I know you're saying that uh, actions speak louder than words, but words very much have consequences. Uh, last week, we saw a convoy of pro-Palestinian uh, supporters uh, inciting racial hatred and also violence against Jewish people. What do you want to say about that? Will you be making sure that doesn't happen that... with the protests that are taking place behind you today? We unreservedly condemn any form of racism and discrimination and hate crime, including anti-Semitism. Those few individuals who carried out those deeds are not part of our team. The Palestinian movement is for inclusiveness, we hate discrimination. That is why we hear that the very fact that Israel's state is carrying out discrimination, therefore we cannot support anybody in the name of the Palestinians to carry out any form of anti-Semitism. So they're not part of our group. And 99.99% of the people who came out last week, over 150,000 of them, carried out a peaceful demonstration demanding our government to impose sanctions in Israel and Israel to end its occupation. OK, and if they turn up today, will you be asking them to go home? Absolutely. They're not part of our team. They, cannot, we, they do not belong to the part of the family of the Palestinian movement and for the freedom of the Palestinian people. We believe in equality for everybody. And this is what we're doing, and this is what we're fighting against in Palestine itself. OK. Isna Patel, good to talk to you. Thank you.